Hello friends, The Green Mile, a novel written by Stephen King. The Green Mile represent the path to death and redemption. So this is another one of the King's great novel after uh, Shaoxing Redemption, The Stand, and many other outstanding novels by, written by Stephen King. So this Green Mile, it is written in 1995, in 1996, uh, and written in United States, published in 1996. Genre of this novel is mystery and magical realism. Climax of this novel is when Edward Delarocque's execution Antagonist of this novel is Percy Wetmore. Point of view written uh, by first person Paul. Uh, so it is a serial novel uh, and story is about the supernatural event that occur in Death Row, also known as the Green Mile. The plot of the story is told through the perspective of Paul at comp, a narrative uh, a retired warden who worked at the Coal Mountain Penitentiary. Penitentiary. So during the Great Depression, Paul recounts the experiences with John Coffey, a giant of a man with supernatural uh, ability. So. The character involved in this novel is, uh, we have John Coffey, a death row inmate uh, with the healing power. And the second character is Paul Hedgecomb, Percy Wetmore, and many other character. So <clears throat> the sadistic and corrupt correction officer, Percy Wetmore, Read the, the, uh, what should I say the, about the theme? The theme involved in this novel is redemption, justice, morality, compassion, supernatural forces. So this is, these are involved in this novel. So let us come towards this novel. So it is told by Paul H. Comp, how he recounts his memory and the time when he was a supervisor of a, Cold Mountain Penitentiary in 1932, as his narrative ships back forth in between 1932 and the present, Paul explained that his goal in recounting this earlier period of his life is to provide a detailed account of one time during his career when he had a serious doubt about his job. At Cold Mountain, Paul supervises e-block, the equivalent of what is commonly known as the, uh, the e-block is as the death row, we called it. E-block has the nickname the Green Mile because of the color of the tiles in the long corridor leading up to the electric chair where condemned inmates await execution in their cells. Paul believes in showing compassion towards the death row prisoners. He and his colleagues, Brutal, Harry and Dean, are constantly frustrated by the behavior of Percy Wetmore, a young guard who behaves crudely towards the inmates, making the atmosphere on e-block violent and unpredictable. After the execution of the chief, a Native American convicted for drunkenly killing a man in a fight and the transfer of the press who murdered his father by throwing him out of a window to another section of prison, Edward de la Crox arrived on E block. His arrival is marked by chaos and brutality. As Percy violently drags him into the corridor, insults him, and hits him with his button, 
Paul scolds Percy for his behavior, but the young man who trusts that his political connection can protect him in any situation feels no sense of remorse, developing instead a growing hatred toward Delacroix. De One evening when Delacroix is heard laughing in his cell, the guard discover that he is playing with the mouse that appeared on e-block a few weeks earlier. At the time of the mouse first appearance, the rodent had amazed the god with his quasi-human intelligence, having shown signs that it was looking for someone. Paul later realizes the mouse had been looking for none other than Edward Delacroix. The mouse whom Delacroix calls Mr. Jingles become the inmates faithful pet and entertain the god with various tricks in particular. Mr. Jingle enjoys running after a wooden spool that Delacroix hits against his cell's wall. A few weeks later, John Coffrey arrives on e-block. Paul describes him as a giant, a towering black man who makes everything around him appear ridiculously small. After giving Kofi the usual speech he reserved for a new inmate, Paul realizes that Kofi is soft-spoken and almost completely illiterate. Paul is started by the peaceful gentleness and that inmates from Kofi's eyes, a strange tranquility that makes the man look absent and lost. Spurred by a curiosity that later turns into an obsession, Paul searched for detail about John Coffey's crime. He discovered that Coffey was charged with the rape and murder of two nine-year-old girls, the Derek twins, one summer morning, the two girls who had been sleeping out on their porch are found missing. The family, a dog strangled to death. A search party is called to look for the two girls and the searcher ultimately find uh, John Coffey holding the bloodiest death bodies of the Detrick twins whose heads have been smashed together, crying ceaselessly Moved by depression, desperation, and grief, Coffey's attitude appeared to be a clear indication of guilt. Coffey is soon arrested and swiftly sentenced to death for his crime. In the meantime, a young new inmate arrives on e-block, William Wharton, a cruel murderer who plays violent tricks on the guard with a persistence that Paul finds terrifying. Wharton is op often punished for his action. Forced into st straight jacket and confined to the restrained room for a few days, but never modifies his behavior. The same day as Wharton's arrival, Coffey urgently calls Paul into his cell, saying he needs to talk to him. Paul, who has been suffering from an excruciatingly painful urinary infection, sits down on Coffey's bunk, and Coffey suddenly touches Paul's groin, sending a flow of painless energy through Paul's body. After Coffey's cuff up a cloud of black insect that turn white and vanish, Paul stands up and realizes that his urinary infection is entirely gone. Coffey performs a second miraculous healing a few weeks later on the day of Delacroix's execution, when Delacroix throws Mr. Jingle's spool against the wall a bit too hard, causing Mr. Jingle's to exit the cell. Percy takes the opportunity to violently crush the mouse under his shoe. After a few seconds later, from within his cell, Coffey tells Paul to give him the mouse. Paul hands it to him and the inmate holds the mouse inside his hand, breathes in and realizes a cloud of black insect that turn white and disappear. The next moment, Mr. Jingle emerged from Coffey's hand alive and well. 
the god look on utterly dumbfounded the same night percy takes his greatest revenge on delicrox he intentionally sabotages delicrox execution failing to wet the sponge that is typically used to conduct electricity through the condemned man's head as a result delicrox suffers an agonizing minutes long death on electric chair during which he essentially burns alive furious about percy's loathsome action the guard make percy promise to apply to transfer to a job at prior rich psychiatric hospital the next day so that they might be rid of him in order to atone for delicrox's horrific death paul decide to use john coffey's power to perform a good deed he convinces brutal harry and dean to take part in an expedition to heal the warden's wife melinda mores for her recently diagnosed brain cancer After sedating William Morton with a st- strong drug and looking Percy up in the restrained room the man drive John Coffey to Warden Moore's house there Coffey heals Melinda in the same way he previously healed Paul and Mr Jingles this time however Coffey is unable to cuff up the black insect and the guard notice that he begins to suffer from the same symptom of which he relieved melinda the guard su- successfully return to prison bringing a weakened coffee back to his cell and let percy out of the restraint room however before percy has a chance to leave the green mile Coffey suddenly grabs him through the bars of his cell he forces percy's lips against his and transfer to him the illness that he had absorbed from melinda mores percy eyes go black and after taking a few uncertain steps he suddenly shoots into william wharton's cell multiple times killing the sedated inmate in his sleep percy never regains his sanity but instead is sent as a patient to the psychiatric hospital where he had applied to work as the official investigation surrounding wharton's death comes to an end and the date of coffey's execution approaches Paul conducts an investigation of his own that leads him to confirm his long-held suspicion that Coffey is innocent. In the process, he discovered that William Wharton is the true rapist and murderer of the Dietrich girls. John Coffey later confirmed this fact. telling paul that once when morton grabbed john's arm john was able to see inside morton's mind and learn about what morton did to the detrick twins the discovery of morton guilt is that spurred coffey to make percy kill morton on e block disturbed by the idea of executing an innocent man paul reveals that he has learned to his wife janice and kulik how were faced with fact that it would be impossible to justify coffey's innocence without referring to his special power in addition to the fact that the racist justice system would never agree to reopen the case of a black man never agree to uh, uh of a black man convicted of a murder Paul and his friends are forced to recognize that they will not be able to save Coffey's life. The guard must thus prepare for Coffey's execution with heavy heart, feeling feeling shameful for ex- execution and executing an innocent man with God giving healing power. Coffey however claims that he is happy to die so that he may escape the cruelty the cruelties of the world paul account of 1932 and with john coffey's death on the electric chair the very last execution of his career once paul finishes writing down his narrative at nursing home he shows his s- story to his special friend elena connelly he then brings her to a secret shed in the woods where he sh- shows her mr jingles who is still alive he explained that when coffee touched mr jingles he made him resistance to the effects of aging paul also reveals that he himself is res- resistant to aging 
After Aline dies a few months later, Paul is left to reflect on the difficulty of his present life. He recalls his wife Janice's brutal death in a bus accident during which he believes he saw Coffey's ghost looking at him from a distant at the nursing home, Paul feels alone in the world, left only with the memories of those he has loved and lost. He laments his current state, in which he must wait joylessly for his own death, as though this life were, not, were but a longer version of the Green Mile. This is the story of the Green Mile by Stephen King, a, more, a marvelous story, and a very uh, exciting story. Thank you very much.